Hello, everybody. Good day. Um, my name is Garrett McDonald, and my main mode of work is uh, working at a venture fund called Permanent Ventures, where we invest in decentralized crypto infrastructure um, with a particular focus on decentralized storage. So today, we wanted to give you guys a more high-level overview of the decentralized storage landscape, um, going into the various offerings that, uh, that exist. Um, so the most popular ones that everybody talks about are obviously um, yeah, Filecoin and Arweave. Um, there are a good amount of honorable mentions throughout time. I mean, storage being one of the first ones that gained popularity, um, you know, seven, eight years ago. And, um, and the rest, there have been a lot of attempts. Um, yeah, I think just something to note when looking at all of the offerings that exist is that it's extremely trivial to artificially seed uh, data to any of these networks, especially the less expensive ones. Um, so just looking at the total data stored as reported by the networks is, is not the only metric that you should consider when um, deciding which is the most popular. So the way that we gauge kind of which is the most popular is the most integrations with popular projects. Um, and that puts both Filecoin and Arweave kind of at the, the top of the list. Um, storage, although you know all of, all of these at least started out as very noble efforts, you know storage I would argue has turned kind of into a zombie, like not doing any kind of significant innovation in the past you know five years or so. Um, and Skynet and Zeus both kind of retreated into generalization, um, shifting away from you know dedicated on like storage offerings. So I would say they're not all that honorable, but if I remove those from my list, I'd say those. Those are the ones that are currently contenders to, you know, kind of get into, um, you know, uh, like the most useful out of all storage protocols. Um, so definitely worth looking at um, and keeping track of. Although I would focus this talk today on both Filecoin and Arweave, as um, they might be the most relevant for developers who um, are actively building like production products right now. Um, so topics of interest when comparing decentralized storage protocols, uh, both user journey and uh, protocol perspectives. Um, so on the left-hand side is like the kind of process that a developer will go through to you know, uh, integrate a protocol um, and so on. But today, um, we'll focus on the protocol perspective. Um, and we'll go line by line through those items, just doing a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, Filecoin and Arweave, um, just to give a good overview of what to expect as a developer uh, when integrating either of the two. Um, and don't worry about scanning this now. I'll put it up again at the end, um, if you didn't get it. Um, yeah, so we'll start with nodes. Um, so we'll, um, we can start with Filecoin. It has uh, distinct nodes types. Um, not notably, the first two nodes are actually not blockchain nodes. They're uh, off-chain nodes for storing data. There's only one node type, which is the, the, the blockchain node or the full node. Um, which runs the blockchain network in the consensus, which is not dependent on the storage at all, actually. Um, so the storage on Filecoin, you could say, is kind of off-chain, and the on-chain uh, node is more of like a decentralized matchmaking marketplace for uh, storage providers and storage customers. Um, there's a huge advantage with Filecoin node implementation, though, is that um, you know uh, there, there, there's two implementations, each in a very popular language. One of them is focused mo most on the like, Chinese locale. And um, yeah, go in Rust, so it's very easy to get developers, obviously, for these. Um, on Arweave, there's a single full node that supports you know, data mining and gossiping and sharing and all that. Um, data retrieval is done in a traditional blockchain style as on Ethereum through uh, either running a full node or if you don't want to run your own full node, you run a gateway, um, as in you know, Infura or, or Pocket Network. And um, there's, there's a big downside where there's only one implementation in Erlang, which is a very obscure language that today is used mostly by telcos because it's known to be very reliable and robust. But a uh, huge downside is there's not, uh, not many developers that actually know that language. Um, so finding additional protocol developers is, is, is a thing. So yeah, that's, that's obviously a big risk. You want more than one protocol implementation um, with a robust network. So it's a downside. Um, so yeah, proofs of storage, uh, Arweave and Filecoin go about this in quite similar ways, actually. They have uh, small nuances there, but uh, if effectively, they're both accomplishing the same thing. Um, they want to make sure that miners are not getting rewarded for storing the same copy of data um, like multiple times. They don't, well, they, well, they want, um, it's kind of funny wording, but uh, we want to make sure that one miner 
isn't, uh, or like 1,000 miners are not uh, getting rewarded 1,000 times for storing one copy of data. So Arweave and Filecoin each have this process of either sealing or packing, where um, where in, you know, in the Filecoin's case, they create a ZK snark of the data set that's being stored. And, um, and this ties that data set as like a, individually to a particular Filecoin mining address. Um, Arweave does the same thing. Um, the difference there is, you know, Filecoin's using a ZK snark, um, which scales up very well with specialized hardware, um, but it's very expensive to do that. Um, but, uh, but it accomplishes that. And then there's Arweave, which uses RandomX, which is geared toward using uh, CPUs. Um, RandomX is the same algorithm that, for instance, Monero uses as their hashing algorithm for mining um, to be kind of specialized hardware resistant. So they want to discourage use of GPUs and FPGAs and so on. Um, mostly just to make it mineable by, by anybody who doesn't necessarily have that spe specialized hardware. Um, so th then the proof of space time and the sync proofs of random access are, you know, two, you know, slightly different ways of accomplishing the same thing. They both want to make sure that um, the, the storage miners actually have access to the data that they're getting rewarded for. So random requests to prove access to particular chunks of data uh, come up. And as long as the miner can prove an access to that particular chunk of data, um, then, then it's allowed. Um, Arweave also has a verifiable delay function, which essentially just makes it so um, there's ample time to seed data to the network before a miner can get rewards for it. So that way a miner can't create a bunch of data on their own, uh, on their own node and get rewards before everybody else has a chance to download and seal or, or pack that data. Um, yeah, data persistence is a super interesting topic as well. Um, the, the two different ways of going about it. Um, Arweave does it on a protocol basis where they're trying to guarantee persistence of the entire data set that's ever been stored up to Arweave. Uh, Filecoin, the user developer selects um, and, and defines their desires for replication. Um, so you pay more if you want more replication, less if you want less, and, um, and, this, and, and this you can also define the amount of time you want to pay for. Um, on Arweave, there's an assumption that's just blanket made across like anybody who wants to store data, and that's you're pay, you're basically just paying for 200 years of storage times 20 replications, um, and uh, and and there's a kind of a key a key difference here. Um, there's an additional feature in Arweave that kind of tries to enable that persistence, and that's this notion of an endowment. Um, so 95% of the transaction fee that you pay when you're paying that you know 200 years and 20 replications. Uh, doesn't go to the miners, it goes into this endowment which is held by the protocol. It's not like a DAO where there's actual people voting on it, it's held by the protocol itself. And this will automatically start adding funds to the, um, to the miner rewards if the amount of data sets uh, or replications of the entire network goes down to around 20, it'll slowly ramp up rewards coming from that endowment. Um, of course, if the endowment runs out of funds, then um, yeah, it's kind of broken. Um, but you know, ideally, it, that doesn't happen. Um, and then on Filecoin, it's uh, it's it's using the same kind of proof of location, proof of space time, um, to ensure that a given contract is fulfilled. That happens on chain through proofs being being submitted from the storage providers to the to the blockchain nodes. Um, and Filecoin is also going to implement um, long-term persistence via smart contracts that will automatically make new deals with new storage providers over a period of time. So that's an interesting offering which um, isn't working yet, but it should be um, good to have like a, an alternative offering for um, persistent storage over long periods of time. Um, yeah, token economics, um, you know, each network have their own token. Um, the uh, Arweave only has one demand driver, which is storage. Um, so, you know, people wanting to store things have to buy the token. Um, Filecoin also has uh, staking. So it's a huge additional demand driver um, where, yeah, uh, if you want to actually mine Filecoin, you're required to stake funds. Um, so this, this, uh, this has the upside of creating more demand, the downside of um, <clears throat> creating more sell pressure because the miners get you know, additional rewards from the staking and uh, that requires a higher inflation schedule. Um, so yeah, Arweave is able to have much lower inflation but um, also lower demand because it's not, um, it's not like, uh, boosted by the, by the staking. Um, yeah, content addressing, fairly similar, although Filecoin uses IPFS for content addressing so you can upload the same piece of data twice 
and uh, it will have the same hash, so you can re-upload data and, and recreate a hash in case you know, a storage contract expires. Um, there's I, no need for that in Arweave because ideally, you know, if the system works, then you upload a piece of data and it's there persistently. Um, so each time you upload a piece of data on Arweave, it gets a unique hash. And uh, you can actually use that if you like to, you know, have additional uh, persistence in the network. You can upload the same piece of data multiple times with multiple hashes. So instead of having a default minimum 20, you have, you know, 40 and so on. If you gap that out over time, then maybe that doesn't land on the same disk and then you have, you know, additional redundancy perhaps. Um, so Filecoin users self-select redundancy um, by you know, p s selecting how many copies of the, of the data that they're uploading uh, they wish to have stored on the network. Um, and Arweave focuses on you know, protocol level redundancy where you know, the protocol itself is handling, ensuring that all the data is stored across all of the nodes which exist in the network. Um, because of this, you know, Arweave, if you lose a piece of data, you can kind of just grab that back via gossip from you know, one of your neighbor nodes. Um, and so there's no like real need for protocol level um, um, kind of like data uh, error correction. But uh, Filecoin implements erasure coding, which is kind of a, just a modern technique for you know same disk um, error correction. So you can think of it kind of like a RAID that exists like disk ag agnostically. Um, and then yeah, finally there's just um, interoperability. Um, yeah, Filecoin has really nice uh, IPFS integration, Ethereum bridges, very well supported by the Ethereum ecosystem uh, because of IPFS being so ingrained with it. Um, or we've takes a more kind of general approach and has uh, HTTP gateways which you can access all the data from, whether it's read-write. Um, you can also call storage via smart contracts. So um, yeah, you can have smart contracts automatically uploading data without um, you know, exiting uh, blockchain. Um, so just in case somebody wanted to take a picture of a kind of overview there, um, that's the summary of kind of the key points in all the slides. Um, yeah, can give you guys a minute to do that. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, in general both, both protocols have a lot of merit um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just uh, important as a developer to consider, you know, which, um, which compromises you want to make um, in order to, um, yeah, achieve what you want. So um, yeah, we're currently working on a full uh, paper with uh, all of the links to the sources for the data in this, in this presentation. Um, that's my email, and thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if there's any questions, happy to, happy to take those. Uh, let's say in a uh, year or five from now, and these things are used heavily, what kind of, and these two, there are no alternatives, these two are still there, what kind of use cases you think would fit like one and what would fit or gravitate towards the other? Um, yeah, if you want less expensive storage for temporary purposes, um, yeah, Filecoin totally makes sense. If the uh, implementation of persistent storage on Filecoin via smart contracts comes about, you can even have long term there as well. Um, by default, uh, you know, Arweave is always persistent, so it's going to be more expensive. Um, so it's only use cases in which you know the data is like important enough that you want to make sure it's around for a very long time. Um, yeah, I guess that I, it's it's hard to get into like the individual use cases without taking a long time, but. Uh, I hope that helps with like a general response. Cool. Any other questions? This one in the, by the TV. Oh, sorry. All right, thank you very much, first and foremost. Um, so I'm wondering um, about uh, some other alternatives and how they play into the, you know, your opinion about the whole landscape. Uh, perhaps also beyond storage, if we're talking about compute bandwidth, uh, for example, Unigrid, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. They're trying to set up an entirely decentralized internet, you know, in multiple, you know, sort of uh, functional areas. Maybe a little bit megalomanian, but, uh, you know, good, good on them. 
uh, but also um, IPSF, of course, you mentioned, but also Golem, I think is still a thing maybe in the landscape. Um, any take on that? Any particular reason why you uh, left those out? Of course, if you don't know them, yeah. but Golem then at least, for example. Yeah, Golem, um, I think the main reason leaving it out is just not hearing from like a lot of developers that are not seeing Golem like integrated with many projects. Um, I used to track that in the past, but kind of uh, less and less over time. Um, yeah, actually, I just forgot to put it on the presentation. Um, but uh, yeah, perhaps it's also should be should be there. Um, but in general, looking at the like, more generalized compute approaches, um, these these projects are super interesting, but just so hard to pull off. Um, yeah, like uh, for instance, I really want to like Urbit, for example, but um, you know it's it's just so so difficult um, to to pull off things like this. Or like iExec in the past was a super interesting attempt at like a decentralized compute platform, but Generalized decentralized compute is so difficult. Hey, I, uh, sorry. Um, do you see any uh, attempt from IPFS Falcon to do something similar to what Arweave has been pushing forward with uh, content licensing via universal data license for via transactions and tax and so on? A similar approach from a set of IPFS uh, Falcon, etc. Or how would they go towards these kind of uh, challenges? Yeah, I haven't seen that kind of attempt from them. I guess it's more difficult because you have all these local data sets that you have to get to consensus. Um, so where do you store that data, first of all, in like an easy access place? I don't know. I haven't thought about implementing like UDL and those kind of RWE features to Filecoin, actually. Um, but I'm not aware of it, those efforts. But I also um, would ask somebody at Protocol Labs, I guess. Yeah. Cool, okay, well, thank you all very much, and have a nice day. Woo!